would want to know about. You submit that, and you just post it. You just put, this is just a regular form, and it, you post it to an iframe, visible or invisible, it doesn't matter. And what happens is, in Firefox, it actually has a pull down, and you can just start spoofing this. You can actually make this happen. Now, so you can spoof it one at a time with whatever you want. I was doing cool stuff with ASCII art earlier. <laughs> but let's say you wanted to uh, fill it. Now, let's stop that for a second. And you can kind of see, I just put a bunch of random data in there and it starts filling it up. You can actually get 200 characters per field, uh, 100 fields at a time, <laughs> that fast. So it fills up rather quickly. It's not enough data to actually kill the browser, so it's definitely not a high severity issue. But uh, Mozilla, actually there was some issues with it, which I'm not allowed to say, but they are patching it now uh, as a security bug. So, depending on the browser, IE6, Safari, or whatever you're doing, you have email addresses and things like that. But what we really want is, uh, we want access to an accounts. Now, fortunately, most all of all the major websites out there take email addresses as usernames, so email addresses are pretty easy to steal. So we want to go after one billion browser users, okay? We want their password. Now, passwords have autocomplete as well. When you type in your username and password, now I'm gonna ask this question knowing full well, everybody's gonna lie. How many people here, raise your hands if you use password autocomplete? Remember, so a few generous people, the rest of you are not telling the truth. <laughs> when you type in a username and password, it'll, at, it'll prompt you. So we haven't picked on Google yet. Now, the thing about passwords, which is different than normal autocomplete, passwords are domain specific, meaning regular autocomplete data shares data across domains, passwords do not. So to, in order to steal a password, you have to get a password form that you control to land on the target domain. Now what is the most prevalent vulnerability out there in the world? Cross-site scripting, right on. What you have to do, if you could target a user, if you know where they've been, you have their email address, and they have remembered their password on that site, and pick your favorite site, Facebook, Google, whatever, you just uh, use job, uh, your JavaScript payload to create a form and you pull it out. Let me show you how this works. So we haven't picked on Chrome yet and Chrome is uh, vulnerable like many browsers are. Pull that over, Oop. too big. All right. I'm on the victim domain. This could be any website that might be vulnerable to cross-site scripting, probably all of them. My email at somewhere.com and my password, login. All right, you guys have all seen this one, right? This little drop down here. Very easy for people to say, save password. Good, done, over. So now if I go back, Should, oh, I don't want that to happen. Now, that is the payload. That's the extent of, again, of the sophistication we're talking about here. It's gonna create a login form. Notice where the payload is. This is on Hacker. We're gonna do a cross-site scripting vulnerability here on victim, calls a script tag, Chrome steal password. It didn't save it, did I hit the wrong button? Did I hit the wrong button, save password? Oh, never mind. I see what happened. So let me try that one more time, shall we? Pops it up, cross-site scripting. The, the, actually, the, the cross-site scripting payload creates the email, uh, creates the username and password field, and it just grabs it out of the form fields and pulls it out. So think of it this way. Again, you target a user. You, let's say you target a Facebook user who has saved their password on Facebook, Facebook phone, click on a link and you grab their password right out of their browser. Yeah, it's crypted on the file system. It's not crypted in the DOM. Really easy to steal passwords that way. Is that uh, sp spooking everybody out or are you not impressed or what? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so this will work uh, very well in Firefox and Chrome. Uh, it sort of works in Safari and IE. They ha there's some actually some mitigations there in those particular browsers where it, it technically works, just not as powerful. It's not as universal. There is a feature that's hidden in about config in Firefox that you can turn on. There's a feature called sign on .auto form, autofill forms. It doesn't represent itself in the GUI, but you can turn this on, meaning it won't automatically fill in your, your password unless you do some uh, GUI commands. So write that down. If you're using Firefox, go turn that on. Uh, now. We have all this information, like say, theoretically speaking, we're the bad guy, right? We've put this out there, all this malware code, JavaScript malware stuff out on the wire, we've put it into an advertising network. And what we want to do is, so let's say all these guys patch these particular issues we're talking about. How do we convert this into a long-term issue that even if it's patched, it really doesn't matter? What the bad guy might do is they put this out on an advertising network, they steal the person's real name, email address, and respond with a cookie on the site. So now their email address, standard web bug, email address name, I give you a cookie back on whoisthisperson.com. They can actually set up a web service. Now they don't have to send out that code out anymore. Let's say website, pick your you know, website that you might go to and you go to that particular website and they want to know who you are but you've never been there, you've never entered information, you have, you're fully patched. You would do a basic JavaScript include, basic JavaScript include, third party web widget, and you call who is person and say who is this person and since you're gonna send those cookies across the wire to who is this person, they can send back a JSON object or something like that and will tell you who you are. So unless all the users dump their cookies, we don't really know if this problem goes away. True, we don't know if anybody's actually used these techniques, but that's the paradigm model there. Unless people dump their cookies, we, don't, we can't really be sure that you, they, people still can't figure out who you are. So I got the idea, okay, we can ask people to delete their cookies as a privacy mechanism or as a way to solve this particular problem. And the regular user way to get rid of cookies, it depends on the browser, you just do the show cookies option, right? and you select all the cookies and you delete them. I wanted a, a better way, a hacker's way. All the browsers have this particular problem. I have proof of concept code running on Firefox, Safari, and uh, Chrome. There is a global cookie cap. Now this is technically known out there. I put the references in there. This is technically known, but not really well talked about. Here's how it works. In Firefox specifically, there's a global cookie cap. You can only store 3,000 cookies in the browser at any given amount of time. You go to 3,001, an older cookie is deleted off the stack. So what you wanna do is you wanna be able to find some way to set 3,000 cookies really, really fast. How do you do this? You set up one domain, badguy.com, 60 subdomains, 1.badguy.com, 2.badguy.com, whatever the case may be, and you set 50 cookies per domain. That's the code to do it. Grinds in the system, loads up 3,000 cookies, and all your other cookies are deleted off the system. Let me show you how this works. Let me uh, log in to a Yahoo account. Where's uh, Firefox here? So we're gonna load up a bunch of cookies. CNN.com. Let's see who else. News. News.com. Right? So we got a couple of cookies. Let's uh, show you the cookies in my browser right here. And I'm going to log into Yahoo right now. Everybody cover your eyes. <laughs> No, I'm not gonna remember my password. <laughs> All right, now I'm logged into Yahoo. Now here's the cookie eviction script. It just runs really fast, so watch how this works. Watch the, uh, I know a lot of you can't see, but watch the taskbar at the bottom. Oop, that work? Maybe not. For some reason, it did not work. 
fail demo. <laughs> All right, that demo failed. Sorry about that. So that will run. That should run in about two and a half seconds. Load up uh, 3,000 cookies in my browser, delete all the other ones, and it will automatically log you out of Facebook, remove all your Google tracking cookies and everything else. Think of it like a mass logout button, right? Go to your site. You can actually purposely force everybody's cookies out of the system. It's really fun when it works. This will work again in uh, Firefox, Safari, and Chrome. There is a fix going in place on some of the browsers. Uh, Mozilla is well aware of this one. They're going to make it so it's a $300 hack, meaning that you're going to have to have uh, 50 domain names to make this work. Uh, no big deal. So what have we got so far? We, uh, depending on your browser, and you got to think of it this way. The people in this room aren't necessarily the victims that the bad guys are targeting. They're going to target, you know, family members, enterprise users that are still on IE6 and things like that. Those are the targets that we're after. So what do we do to help start solving this problem? Uh, what you can do here, advice when you go back to work, uh, disable autocomplete in the browser as much as you can tolerate. Remove persistent data, history, form data, cookies, local storage. If you're using Firefox, no script, one password, still working with that particular extension. And if you're a website owner, uh, form autocomplete equals off will uh, prevent your form fields from saving in the autocomplete data so you can help protect your users just a little bit. We've uh, gone through everything. Questions? <laughs> no questions, seriously? All right, well, everybody's thinking of a question. All this material is on the blog already, all proof of concept code, videos, information, everything else. Uh, no questions, really? Yes, sir? Is there a way to force browser vendors to get rid of that option? Uh, you can ask them not to have it there by default, <laughs> but uh, I found no way to force browser vendors to do anything. Their, their mission is uh, market share, not security, not ne security necessarily, unless it impacts market share. All right. Thank you very much for your time.